So Betsy Ann has to leave. Down. Thank you. Betsy Ann has to leave in a, couple, a little bit because she has to go to the house. Um, would you like to tell us where 124 is in the process? What's going on with it? Sure. Hello, everybody. Hi. Uh, Good morning. Uh, how the Good house? Afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Sorry. Did I say this morning? Good morning. Yes. Um, I said. I think I said this morning. This morning. Uh, <laughs> yes. The House took up S-124, second reading, the House approved, House GovOps uh, recommended strike all to the bill. Um, the House was not able to consider the follow-up amendment that is proposed by Representatives Copeland, Hansis, and Gardner. Um, they just didn't have access to it at the time, and so that is still pending, and the House plans to request a suspension of the rules this afternoon um, to take up S-124 for third reading and prior to third reading consider the uh, Copeland, Hansis and Gardner amendment. I think that we discussed the other day, Gail has posted it on your website. Thank you, Gail. Um, it's the draft 2.1 amendment that has the four instances of amendment that are proposed to the House GovOps strike all. Um, those four instances of amendment cover three different areas. The first one is who can be appointed chair of the Vermont Criminal Justice Council. Um, the House GovOps strike all would have said that the governor would appoint the chair from among the seven gubernatorial appointees. Um, ah. Instead, this would, this uh, first instance of amendment would say that the governor will appoint the chair of the council from among a specified list of council members, which are those members that are not related to law enforcement. The third topic that's covered by the second and third instances of amendment is in regard to the uh, prohibition on facial recognition technology. In the House GovOps recommend strike all, there was a statutory prohibition on the law enforcement use of facial recognition technology, except as it's currently permitted for drones under current law. The uh, follow-up amendment would get rid of that statutory prohibition in place thereof put a session law moratorium on law enforcement officers use of facial recognition technology until the use of facial recognition technology is authorized by an enactment of the General Assembly, but still allowing it to be used on drones as permitted under the drone law. And related to this is the third instance of amendment, which uh, requests a report back from the council as part of the list of law enforcement recommendations um, for the council to recommend any uses for law enforcement officers to use facial recognition technology. So that would come back um, with the other reports that are required of the council. And then the third topic that's in the fourth instance of amendment is the deadline for the regional planning commissions to submit their inventory of all of their town's public safety resources. If you recall, in lieu of the Senate's proposed uh, requirement for each town to have a public safety plan, House GovOps strike all amendment would have eliminated that, but as a substitute uh, provide that each regional planning commission has to have one inventory of all of their town's public safety resources. Um, in the House GovOps recommended strike all, it was a deadline for the regional planning commissions to do this by July 1, 2022. Um, they are, the follow-up amendment would move up that deadline to be December 31st, 2021. Okay, so they're gonna take that up this afternoon and hopefully do third reading and suspend the rules and messages to us. Yeah, it's gonna depend on suspension of the rules, um, whether they will get that for third reading. Um, and okay. if, if that does happen, then it's my understanding that they'll take up this amendment. And um, then I would think that they would, if it does pass third reading, that they would message it over to you. Okay. Oh, it's Thank all tentative. You. Yeah, thank you. So I have a committee, I, I just want to relay some conversations that I've had around some of this. There is, um, and I, there's a lot of um, pretty deep concern in the um, 
law enforcement public safety community around the legislature's um, tendency to be micromanaging them. And I, I have um, some empathy with that because I think that, um, for example, the, the one about the dispatch fees, they, that really is, I think, kind of micromanaging it. So, um, and, and they also, so my conversations have kind of focused on th that broad <coughs> feeling, but also then on a couple very specific things. One that I tried to get um, some read on was the facial recognition. And at this point, no one is using it. There are, there is, some facial recognition in body cameras and stuff, but it's not the kind of technology we're talking about here. So they they are okay with with that because no one is using it now anyway at that that type of facial recognition. The deadlines that we put on for reports there are uh, some of them seem to be quite unreasonable, and um, given the amount of work that they're, the council and is particularly the council, but also DPS is gonna have to do. And so the conversations that I've had have been um, around how those reports might be generated. Many of them are already addressed by the executive order. And so people are working on them um, for the executive order, which will be, uh, presented sometime in October. And for an example of that is the when we asked for the AG's office to convene a group to talk about community oversight or community review or whatever we want to call it. DPS and the council are already do they're already looking at that and they're working with the AG's office. And the reason we put AG in charge of that, I think, was because primarily of Julio Thompson, who has done a lot of work in that area. So I um, have tried to convince them that we don't really care who convenes the, the meeting to do the, to do the report. If, if DPS or the council or whoever gets together a group and works with the AG's office and other groups. Personally, I don't know about the rest of you, but personally, I don't care who convened the meeting and who kind of felt in charge of it to come up with the report. If the report is, it comes up with some recommendations, that's, um, I think that's what we want. And we tried to include the groups that should be um, worked with. and. And DPS, they are going to be working with community groups because they hired Aton to very specifically make sure that community groups were, were consulted and involved in the process of all these reports. And as far as deadlines, if we have a deadline of January 15th and they come in and say, you know, we just we could not complete this report by January 15th. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I, I don't know about you, but I, I think that if they come in with a progress report, that's what we want. We want people working on these, um, not, not uh, Betsy Ann, did you? Yeah, just related to what you just said, um, the, the language in the bill, and it, this was as passed the Senate also, was that that January 15th deadline was on their progress in regard to okay. the following topics, okay. including any recommendations for legislative action. So I think it could be read as a, a progress report on how things are going. Good. Okay, that's, so, <clears throat> the, so that's there. And then the other one around the dispatch fees, um, I think that's something we have to address again next year, but I, I quite honestly don't want that to kill this whole bill. So if the House accepts it, my suggestion is we accept it. And then um, <clears throat> I've told um, Commissioner Sherling that we'll work with him next year on 
on that issue. So I don't know where, but here, let me just throw this out too, because I, I, I know that we need to make changes. I know that we're, there's a lot that needs to happen, but I also know that people have been working on this for a long time and have been trying, that <clears throat> the council and Shirling and people have been working in the right direction and working on the assumption of the um, 21st century policing uh, guidelines. And my fear is that as we try to micromanage too much that um, people, I mean, we just lost Jennifer Morrison, right? In Burlington and Gunny Fitzgerald in Brattleboro and how much of their retirement was due to this, I don't know, but my fear is that we will lose the really good people who are um, working to go in the direction that we're, we want them to go and that many, many law enforcement people want law enforcement to go and that we'll lose those good people and end up with um, not such, sympathetic people to our positions. So I, I just, I had to throw that out because I, I think this is a, an issue that we need to take seriously. So anyway, I just wanted to share what I've been hearing and what I've been um, talking with about to the commissioner and uh, Chief Brickell and some other people. So, so there you have it. That's all I have to say. Brian. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm fine with the change about the facial recognition. I'm fine with the change in date, but I still feel strongly enough about the chair having to be selected from non-law enforcement people that I can't support the uh, amendment that the House is offering. You guys can go ahead and make it 401 if you want, but I just, uh, I feel strongly enough about that. Yeah, and I understand that. I think that um, uh, the more I think about it, I, it's okay with me um, because you have the, the chair would be working really closely with the executive director of the academy. That's the chair and the director would have to be working together. And the director, the ED of the academy is going to be a law enforcement person. So you will have that kind of, that kind of balance. And I think the fear is that if you had both positions being law enforcement, that you might um, have that non-law enforcement uh, people on the council might be feel intimidated. So, but I, I understand your concern. Anybody else? Betsy, oh, Anthony? Well, it's Betsy saying goodbye. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Just go Bye. To the house. Thank you, Betsy. Thanks, Bye. Betsy. Anthony? I just wasn't sure where you were, come, where you were going when you talked about the um, dispatch fees. I mean, well, you say that they, they wish they shouldn't be in the bill that that part should it should not be in the bill or they just no, no. Show where you're going remember we had in the we had in there that the they would do it by rulemaking and right. they would set the fees and then there would be this um uh what do you call it gradually um setting the getting the fees so that it wasn't a cliff so that towns were right. okay. and the house changed it so that they um, they have to work with all these different groups around setting the fees, and then it has to come back to the legislature to approve the fees. Oh. And so it's a much longer um, and complicated, more complicated, more com much more complicated and longer and um, so that's the part they don't like. Hmm? That's that's what they don't like. Yeah, they, they feel that that is micromanaging them. Sure. Okay, I was just, I was, that's fine. Yeah, 
and, and, and I, I think we can, um, whoever is here next year can address that again and figure out how to make it um, less cumbersome. Sure. Uh, uh, Jeanette, in, yeah. in your conversations with law enforcement, did they feel they had adequately been able to make their case for that in the House GovOps? Um, <clears throat> it's interesting because um, there's a lot of stuff right now aimed at law enforcement and ours is probably the least um, is making the least changes and the least demands. And so it, the, in the house, it got all mixed up also with S-119. Right. Which is the use of force bill. And, um, and I think they felt they really didn't, weren't able to um, have input there. Although some house members will tell you that they had too much input. So it's just, um, but I think they didn't say they didn't have time to weigh in on that they um, that particular issue. Yeah, I was just curious if they felt they'd been heard because uh, that would be concerning if they hadn't been able to make their case for keeping it as it was with us. Yeah. And I, I, I can see, I guess, both sides of it. The legislature usually approves fees in the fee bill um, when we have other fees, but this is a little bit different. And um, I think they already have a fee schedule <laughs> that they uh, think is a fair fee schedule and are looking to um, uh, finalize it and then go through the rulemaking process. So anyway. So. Dispatch continues to be a thorny path for us to, to navigate. Law enforcement in general, I think, is a thorny um, path. And because we have such a bizarre non-system. Yes, our patchwork doesn't help. So anyway, that's where it is. So I'm... I'm hoping that the House will approve the changes. And Ryan, you're okay with the other changes, right? Just not that one. Yes. So when we report it, we can say that the um, committee was unanimous on all the changes except for that one section. And that's why the vote was. That's fair. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm hoping that the governor will sign it. <laughs> yeah, so I guess that's my other question about law enforcement. Are they frustrated enough so that they, uh, so that we, the governor might not support this bill? I, I don't know. I don't, I think they're frustrated in general, whether this bill um, suffers because of it. And I do understand their frustration in general. And I, it's, it's a really hard issue. And the, some of the things that we're doing, I think are, are not the right things to do, but um, not in this bill, I didn't mean, but they're frustrated. And you know, who would, who would wanna go into law enforcement today? And who would wanna stay in there? And so I, I, I think this is a real fear that we'll lose good people who are working in the direction of making the changes that we want them to make. So true, true that. Yeah. Hmm? True that. And I hate to see that, but yeah, it's, um, it's unfortunately some of the best people, I think, in a way, can be most sensitive to the claims against the worst. And it wears them out more than the people that you would hope would change their ways. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know how, what we do about that, except that we just keep plugging away. 
Well, right. you know, I mean, to your point, I'm just thinking <laughs> we're, it is rather late, but I don't know if there, and maybe it's more for next year, or maybe it's conversations we all have during the, I was going to say during the summer, <laughs> wait, <laughs> during the off session. And that is, you know, to reach out in positive ways to law enforcement. So they're hearing something more than just us picking on, you know, all well intentioned, but they hear some positive things about what they're doing more than just always hearing about, well, could you make this better? I mean, no writer, for instance, likes only to get edits on their work. They would like to hear that someone's appreciating what they already wrote, even if the edits could improve the book, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, and to that end, uh, in terms of what we can do, Chris, um, I believe Matt, Birmingham, at least the commander in our barracks, in the Royalton barracks, are, are reaching out to their towns and going to select boards and, mm -hmm. and having conversations with them. And I think that's happening statewide. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just here in Windsor County. But I, uh, I'd encourage us all to be in touch with our commanders of the barracks and, and try and go to some of those meetings with them and, and support you know, support their efforts to, you know, open dialogue with uh, their communities that they represent. And with local PDs and sheriffs also. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I know specific, I, I was, this is a specific effort. And I believe, uh -huh. Matt, that, that, that it's statewide, but I, uh, maybe it's, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. But anyway, we can find out. Yeah, well, I think that, um, and Chris is right, that it would be, I've been trying to do that in my conversations. Um, but, you know, it's, um, if all you hear is how terrible you are. Yeah. It's um, hard to rough. keep a positive attitude and not want to just jump ship. Okay. So. And even if it's not how terrible you are, but just you could do better here, you could do better there, you could do better there. Like sometimes people like to be acknowledged for what they're already doing, mm -hmm. uh, doing well. You know, I see the police blotter, and I it reminds me of you know how many um, crimes and stuff these guys are still in the background. You know, we're not hearing about all this. They're still dealing with a lot of you know crime all over the state. Um, still doing their job. And um, so, well, I don't, I don't want to, it's easy to forget that part, that's all. Right. The, the commissioner told us, and he re-emphasized this in um, uh, judiciary the other day, that in 2019, there were 115,000 events with just the Vermont State Police. In, oh. And that meant that they had contact with, in each of the, in those events with about 300,000 people. 300,000 people, 115,000 events. And in only 183 of them was anything beyond compliant handcuffing used. So we hear about all the um, use of force and the terrible actions by them. And yet there were 183 out of 115,000. Wow. And that resulted was any- in, Resulted in an action more than being handcuffed? compliant handcuffed yep so that, that that isn't a a very high number of them having to use i mean it's still a lot and maybe some of that went way beyond <laughs> where it should have but that's anything beyond compliant handcuffing so what that was 2019 mm -hmm. well that's a lot. That's actually a lot of events. That's people calling you for everything from things they're suspicious of to actual things that are happening. And that's just the Vermont State Police. Then you have all the local and all the sheriffs. So, and we, we didn't get numbers on those. But anyway, I didn't mean to um, get, get so preachy, but I'm very concerned about this. So. Anyway, Brian. So on another matter, I just heard from the administration that the House has not 
concurred with the Senate on the budget and right. is going to go to a conference committee, apparently. Not really. That's what I heard. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. We were, there were some pretty major differences. Well, that just keeps us here another, who knows how long. Uh, uh, my guess is they'll resolve them fairly quickly. Like tomorrow. We might be here till Saturday. Uh, is that what you're thinking? I don't, I don't know if that's true, no. I just wanted to let you know what I heard. Well, maybe the two chairs can have an extra meeting and uh, accelerate our progress. <laughs> Jane, Jane said yesterday that Kitty is so happy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, well, thank you, Brian. That's sure. All right. So I, I assumed that we would probably end up there just because, I don't know, they just as we walked through it, the, the, it was very clear there were significant differences in, in uh, where we ended up on money. See, I didn't think there were that many. I yeah. thought they were all minor. Those are what I know. Right. Yeah, e on economic development, not minor. I mean, there's some pretty major diff amounts and stuff. So, <clears throat> committee, if we don't get, if we get one, we may not need to meet tomorrow. Because. Are you, are you getting ready to make an unannouncement? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm thinking that if, if, um, whatever they pass over to us unless it's very different than what it is now um we will concur four to one with the understanding that all of the differences were acceptable to all of us except for one one difference and um and if we do that i don't know that we need to meet again at all do we oh unless they do something with 354 what is 354 that's our emergency our our lessons learned bill. Bill. yes where are they with our lessons learned bill i don't know where where are they with our 10 pilot towns bill well there i we. asked about that earlier <laughs> I know. I'm a that's wall. <coughs> It'll die. Well, we'll just have to do it again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, that's a good question. Um, have you and Sarah talked about? Uh, obviously, you must have talked about the lessons learned bill. Yeah, but they were so busy with 124, and and they also were um, involved with 119, which I didn't quite understand why. But 119 is the use of force bill. And in the Senate, it's just in judiciary. We didn't do it at all, but they were, they also did that. So, okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, hmm, okay. Well, so I guess we'll, we may, we may need to do, do we need to do a formal vote or is this sort of our vote on 124 if, if it all sugars down the way you're expecting? Would, if you would like to do a, a formal vote on it and then I, um i think okay i mean we don't well, exact i think it's premature in that we don't actually know what yeah I, I don't, I don't, yeah you don't need a vote you're just concurring or not concurring with the house proposal of amendment yeah. right and if it is as it as it seems that it's going to be then we will concur four to one with the understanding that right. everybody agreed all five of us agreed, except on one issue. Right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, but if it changes considerably, then we'll have to yeah. do something yeah. else. And then, so we should wait, watch, and see if we need to meet tomorrow for either that or three fifty-four. Great. We will hang glue. Okay. For tomorrow, um, did are we are we back in the floor at one normal time, yeah. or are we starting yes. earlier? No. At one. at one. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And See you tomorrow. Thank you. Great. Thank you. See you all. later.